All right, I've had to give myself a few days to calm down. I did record a rant about this article uh, when this came out, but I, I, I couldn't show it. <laughs> right, so I've had a few days. I want to kick it straight in because uh, I have a lot to cover. Right, now, first thing is Paul Robeson, right? Wonderful Paul Robeson, fantastic singer. Uh, made a film set in Wales, spent a lot of time in Wales. His incredible special bond, with, particularly with South Wales miners, all right, from the valleys. It's a source of immense pride. And it's a great example of cohesion and an absence of racism and workers of the world are so uniting to show to common causes, okay? He spoke incredibly highly of them. I'll just give a quick potted history of it. He's supposed to be in the late 1920s or so, walking through London when he heard a bunch of guys singing. It's supposed to be some Welsh boys in London from a choir. And he joined in and built this bond. That's the sort of legend. Although his father, according to this article, been living in Cardiff since 1919. So he already had links and probably went to Wales. But anyway, it's a nice story. Why not? Now, where the history comes in then is that um, in the 1930s, he performed all over Wales. There's this particular bond with Wales, right? Even as far up as North Wales, where as it reports here, there was some sort of disaster. And he helped to build um, you know, a place which later became... A hospital, if you like, for recovering coal miners, and then, um, yeah, sorry, uh, he did. He also did private performances of coal miners in that. They had this fantastic sort of workers' bond, okay, which overrode any any racial differences. Now, but even this, right? Even this is kind of this this. The most annoying about this article, right? The person we come on to in a minute, his name is Stifarter, is that he he manages to besmirch it all and does it grudgingly and with bad taste and tries to make it feel like it's racist really it's racist 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 all these wonderful things we could be saying let's not forget you know that these are horrible people and it's like um he says things like uh there's all this acceptance and everything people are quoting you things were never that easy for black welsh miners you know well <laughs> not sorry, unfortunately in real life cause he's comparing it with the film that he made with welsh miners things were never that easy for welsh black miners well Two things. One, who are all these black Welsh miners? And there's a Nathan Blake BBC programme, but I mean, we're talking in handfuls. They're not in the valleys. I mean, right or wrong, good or bad, they just weren't, right? It was a white population. And the second point, exactly who was it easy for? My grandfather died in his 50s. He was a coal hewer uh, from coal dust. It killed him. Uh, he had to box. He boxed on uh, the weekends to raise more money. He's actually very successful, being a lightweight champion of South Wales. And at his funeral, uh, one of the people there was a black former opponent who turned up to mark his respects. There was not a racial problem. It was tough for everybody. My great-grandfather before, before him all died young from coal dust. It was crap. All right? They had no money, terrible life, and died young. So don't give me this easy for people nonsense. I'm not having it, okay? It's a disgrace. And this is why I have to say something. Cause this is an insult, a direct insult to my ancestors in Welsh history. All right? And I'm suitably annoyed about it. All right, okay, so they say things like, um, yeah, yeah, so what, what happened anyway? So they're moving on a bit now when Robeson went back to America. Oh, I just want to drop in as well. During the 1940s, because that was 1930s, during the 1940s, loads and loads and loads of American uh, GIs were stationed in South Wales, ready for departure to D Day from Barry Docks and that. They were the major takeoff points for D Day, okay? And uh, they were amazed because, uh, like, for example, Abercunnan, my family home, uh, the, the, the playing fields, the cricket field, became a, a campsite for the American soldiers. And the black, a lot of them were black for some reason, a black regiment there. They were amazed at the welcome they got. They were invited into people's houses, they had cups of tea, the girls would go out and dance with them, the whole thing. All right, There was no problem. And there's loads and loads of reports where they were just amazed. The things they could never do back in America, whereas in South Wales it made no difference at all. And they were truly shocked that people invited them to their homes and were so welcoming. And even let their daughters go out with them and all that kind of thing. So it was a fantastic bond, all right? Another, another thing which is, which is just disingenuous, he talks about 1919. Well, for one, what's he got to do with Paul Robson? Robson. He says, in 1919, there were race riots in Cardiff for returning soldiers blaming the blacks for losing their jobs. No, they blamed the government for losing their jobs. And those riots, as it mentions here, took place all over Britain. 
Whole regiments were up in arms. The government had to send in blinking tanks and everything in London and Brighton. Liverpool were terrible riots. Uh, near Cardiff, there's actually a black regiment mutiny, the whole regiment. It, this was not a racial thing. This was the appalling treatment, as always seems to happen after a war, especially the social change in World War One. A lot of the jobs are gone. Uh, a lot more women were employed. Industry had changed, become more efficient. And also, they didn't want to employ them. He wants to employ someone who's shell-shocked, or PTSD as we call it today. Lots of them losing arms and legs and being dumped on the scrap heap. So, you know, read some of the Wolf of Lowen poems and stuff like that. It, this, this is not about racism at all, and it's malicious to twist it. And I noticed the BBC are doing the same thing. There's that Nathan Blake programme at the Black Miners, which I think is incredibly stretched. And also there was a thing on a couple of weeks ago on Radio 4, talking about the race riots and the, the rioting mobs going around smashing up the black people's houses. They wouldn't have lasted five seconds in Tiger Bay, okay? The docks and that were mostly Somali running those days and had been for a long time. That's why people in Cardiff are smoking hash. Uh, I don't know, 80 years before the hippies in the 60s because the Somalis ran a lot of that, all right? You weren't going to go through there smashing anybody up. Right, um, the other thing that mentions here is that uh, 1930s, yeah, there's the... the, the, the Another proud moment from Welsh history, which he kind of grudgingly puts in here, so there's some good things, that the Spanish Civil War, where there had been a fascist uh, coup, and they were trying to restore, well, I could call it a communist or socialist government, whichever. A lot of Welsh miners volunteered and went over. 33 of them were killed. And as Paul Robeson said, these fellows fought not only for Spain, but for me and the whole world. He thought the world of the... The, the, the Welsh miners. Now, taking the story on, so you're on to the 1940s, 1950s, what, well, well, Spanish Civil War was 1930s, but, you know, the, the 1950s, Paul Robeson was caught up in the McCarthyism, the witch hunt of the day. <laughs> Reflections of what's coming here, perhaps. But anyway, in this, in this instance, it was communists and anyone with those sort of sympathies. And I'm sure those statements he made about Spain didn't help him, but Robeson was shut down. He was banned from performing, and he had to, um, uh, he lost his passport. And that was the, so what they did, an international uh, movement, which <laughs> right at the centre of it and prominent with the South Wales miners again, supporting their fellow oppressed workers around the world. Nothing to do with racism. And they had this international campaign called Let Paul Robeson Sing. And one of the most amazing things they did, which should be celebrated on posters and statues everywhere, is they had uh, a concert in Porthcawl, uh, where 5,000 people turned up and Paul Robeson sang through the telephone with a Triorchy and they broadcast it, you know, or beamed it through speakers and then the, the Triorchy male voice choir sang with him. The first virtual concert was in Wales, okay? All this is wonderful, but even that is kind of, the way it's done here is sort of backhanded, you know? So like little digs, like, yeah, they did that, but then it was race riots and yeah, they did that, but it wasn't easy for black coal miners and they did this and... And he just drops in this stuff then about campaigns for fairer pay for black dockers and all this kind of stuff. It's a completely separate issue. Because even if those riots and stuff were connected with racism, which I don't think they were, but anyway, even if we do that, it's still well away from the South Wales coal miners, which is what this article is supposed to be about. And now I don't usually do this, but I am going to do a little bit about who wrote the article because it's uh, it's a kind of uh, personal attack as well. Like, so there we go. He works with Cadu. So here he is promoting uh, Welsh history, of course, on his page, on LinkedIn page. Oh, no, no, this is Terracotta Warriors, that's in China, which he seems to have far more interesting. Why are you even bothering Wales, mate? Uh, here we go, works the Welsh government. Well, <laughs> looks like it, doesn't it, but... All right, so here we go. Oh, there's a picture there. Let's have a look at that. Right, anyway, so here we go. So he's done five years now at the uh, Welsh government. But hang on a second, it's all broken up. Two years doing buildings, three years as a case officer. Before that, he's been just a drifter. Nine months history project, four months teaching English in China. He's obviously got more interest in Chinese history. Three years in Guangdong, and then it's a year teaching English, ten months foreign teacher, two months Palestine, two months here, a year and seven months there. You know what I mean? Less than a year, less than a year. And this guy's got the cheek and audacity to write something which he clearly doesn't know anything about. I bet he's never even spoken to a South Wales miner or asked anybody what they view on this. And, and please, let's have a list of names who this was so difficult for. Who are you talking about? Give some references. Why are there no references? We need to do a hit piece, back it up with some evidence, all right? That's what we want to see, okay? And this, this is amusing. I'm just going to finish with this. 
Uh, there we go. He's got his Doctor of Philosophy, PhD in City, Urban, Community and Regional Planning. Those words terrify me. All right, absolutely terrify. But he didn't waste his time there because uh, the, the top of his CV, his star achievement, was uh, the Wargaming Role Playing Society, who's secretary and then president. Well done. I don't think it's Wargaming done years of it myself, but it wouldn't be top of my CV, especially if I was claiming to represent Welsh history and writing stuff like that. So, thanks a lot, Thomas. I hope you see this, and I'd love to hear from me. If you want to debate it any time, bring it on, pal. Easy to get a hold of me. Till the next time, the Ochoa Heluch.